So some of these technologies are rapidly evolving and sometimes there are concerns in how valid are the results that we're seeing. I don't think that we're seeing too many false negative or false positive results with the rapid diagnostics. What we're seeing is that many times we don't know if the person is colonized or truly infected with an organism. Now with molecular diagnostics, we're able to detect the genome of bacteria and determine with, with mass spectrometry, we're able to find pathogens that before we didn't know were part of our gut microbiome. So now we don't know if this is a gut translocation and this is something that it's a commensal but it's not causing a true disease versus oh my god, now this bacteria that we always thought was very naive and not causing a problem is now a true pathogen. Um, so you really need to look at what's your pretest probability, right? What are the chances of this patient having an infection? Two, what's the best test? What am I going to use in my environment? Do I take care of transplant? Do I take care of neonates? Do I take care of pediatrics? Or I live in a community where we don't have superbugs and, you know, or travelers. So what is your population? What is the pretest probability of this test being positive? And what is the test? that you're trying to use in that context. If you don't have a lot of arvoviruses in your area and you start just doing you know, PCR in spinal fluid on everyone who comes to your emergency department, you're gonna start detecting things that perhaps are not real. And that may be a contamination in the lab sample, it could be a false positive result. So you have to be very careful in how you use the technology and how to interpret it. You have to have certain incidents of a disease in order to find it and you cannot just apply it universally to everyone.